Hello my goats, welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin and you're watching another Command Valley Deck Tech. Riding on the Cal Time train, we've got another super fun and exciting commander that honestly I don't feel has gotten much excitement, but as soon as I saw it, I came up with some pretty spicy things, so I hope you guys love this deck. A quick reminder before we begin that this episode is sponsored by Game Grid. If you are looking for any cards or this deck entirely, we will include a deck list in the description box below where you can take it directly to their website and get it shipped directly to your house. Really helps us out a lot, so a big thank you to Game Grid. And of course, the biggest thank you to all of our patrons. If you are looking to support the Command Valley, check us out on patreon.com slash commandvalley and check out all of our awesome perks, including exclusive content, merch, playing games with the crew, lots of fun stuff, so check it out. And lastly, if you like this video and this deck tech, then please like, subscribe, share this with your friends, Make sure that you comment on the video with any recommendations or if you've built this deck and how you've built it. The commander we are building around today is Cardor Doom Scourge, an uncommon legend from Cal Time. He is two black red for a 4-3 legendary creature demon berserker. When Cardor Doom Scourge enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures your opponent control attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able. And whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Now, I don't necessarily know why this card is a common. If you think of the card that resembles Cardor the most, it's Disrupt Decorum, which is also four mana that goads all creatures your opponents control. Now, Cardor and, and Disrupt Decorum are different. Disrupt Decorum and Goad only apply to the creatures that were on the battlefield when you goaded. However, Cardor applies to any creatures that enter the battlefield during their turn. So if they have any hasters or they flash in some creatures, they, they will still be technically goaded, which that, that's pretty cool on the face. However, he also has a blood artist effect in combat, which you put those two together and you've got a really interesting spicy potential here. Now, the first thing I thought with Cardor is, oh my goodness, let's make goad tribal a thing. Unfortunately, we don't have enough goad to make Go Tribal a relevant deck. However, and fortunately, I changed it to more of an aristocrat style deck with a punch. Now let me explain that. Because Cardor has a Blood Artist-esque effect, that means we can still do the aristocrats style deck by including all of the payoffs, the death triggers, all of the creatures, but we're also gonna be able to use combat to our advantage when that's where the punch comes in. So first we're gonna go over the aristocrats part of the deck and then we'll go over the punch part of the deck which is essentially just making combat a lot funner than you're normally used to. All right then let's start with the aristocrats section. Now every good aristocrats deck has three pillars or focus around three pillars. The first is creatures because in order to get those effects from aristocrats we need creatures. The second is death triggers. Now the most important part of an aristocrats deck is the dying and we want to make sure that when creatures die we have effects that give us advantage. The third pillar of an aristocrats deck is your sacrifice outlets. That means you want to be able to control when and how you are getting those death triggers from the creatures that you are making. So let's start with creatures. The best way to get a lot of creatures out quickly is by making a lot of tokens. So in this deck, we've got a lot of token potential, a lot of token makers. So let's go through those. First up, we've got Tilanali Summoner, which is one in a red for a one, one human shaman with ascend. And whenever he attacks, you may pay X and red. If you do create X one, one red elemental creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. At the beginning of the next egg and step, exile those tokens unless you have the city's blessing. Now this, this card is already nuts on its face, but we're not really that upset if we don't have the city's blessing. It's very easy to get there, but when we're attacking, we're still going to get those triggers off of Cardor, and we can sacrifice those tokens in combat, even if they've already dealt damage in the post damage step, sacrifice those with one of our sacrifice outlets and we'll still get those triggers off of Cardor. Young Pyromancer is one in a red for a 2-1 human shaman. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 elemental creature token. Cranko Tin Street Kingpin is two in a red for a 1-2 legendary creature goblin. Whenever he attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it, then create a number of 1-1 red goblin creature tokens equal to Cranko's power. Bogart Mob is three in a black for a 5-5 Goblin Warrior. 
Champion a Goblin when it comes into play, and whenever a Goblin you control deals combat damage to a player, you may put a 1-1 Black Goblin Rogue Creature token into play. Now you'll notice there's going to be a little bit of a Goblins theme because the best tokens in Rakdos are, as you can tell, Goblins. Chittering Witch is 3 and a Black for a 2-2 Warlock. When Chittering Witch enters the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 Black Rat Creature tokens equal to the amount of opponents you have, which is normally going to be 3, but you know, if you're crazy and you want to play in a 6 player game, then Chittering Witch just gets that much better. But you can also pay one and a black to sacrifice a creature and target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Krenko Mob Boss is two red red for a three three legendary creature goblin warrior and you can tap him to create X one one red goblin creature tokens where X is the number of goblins you control. An absolute powerhouse even on its own, even if we don't have that many goblins out. Sling Gang Lieutenant is three and a black for a one one. When he enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens and sacrifice a goblin. Target player loses one life and you gain one life. Nadir, agent of the Duskinel, is five and a black for a 3-3 three, three legendary elf warrior. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Nadir. And when Nadir leaves the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens equal to its power. Chancellor of the Forge is four red 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 for a 5-5 five, five giant. You may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do. At the beginning of the first upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste onto the battlefield. And when Chancellor of the Forge enters the battlefield, put X 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures you control. Tempt with Vengeance is red and X for a sorcery with tempting offer. Put X 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. Each opponent may put X 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. For each player who does, put X 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. Kind of hard to, to make what this really means, but essentially, you'll pay X to put that many tokens into play. Your opponents may do the same, but for each opponent that does that, you get double the amount. Fire Cat's Blitz is red red X for a sorcery. Put X 1-1 one, one red cat creature tokens with haste into play. Remove them from the game at end of turn, and you can flash it back for red red and sacrifice X mountains. Goblin Offensive is red red 1 and X for a sorcery, put X 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. Empty the Warrens is 3 and a red for a sorcery, put 2 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens into play, and it also has Storm, which can be relevant because some of these turns we may be casting a lot of spells. Mog Infestation is 3 red red for a sorcery, destroy all creatures target player controls for each creature that died this way. That player creates 2 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. So this is really nice because we can have 10 tokens out on the battlefield and use Mog Infestation targeting us and all of a sudden we get 20 red goblins instead. Hellion Eruption is 5 and a red for a sorcery. Sacrifice all creatures you control then put that many 4-4 red Hellion creature tokens onto the battlefield. Strict upgrade from 1-1 one, one goblins. Kindred Charge, a personal favorite of mine, is 4 red red for a sorcery. Choose a creature type for each creature you control of the chosen type. Create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those token gains haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. But again, we don't really care about it having that text that exiles them. On, the, uh, on our end of turn because we're gonna be able to just use them right away. One wild card that honestly just makes me really happy, Rally the Horde. For five of red, we have a sorcery. Exile the top card of your library. Exile the top card of your library. Exile the top card of your library. If the last card exiled isn't a land card, repeat this process and create a 1-1 one, one red warrior creature token for each non-land card exiled this way. That updated rules text is just absolutely wild. If you don't believe me, go look it up on Scryfall. Plague of Vermin is six and a black for a sorcery. Starting with you, each player may pay any amount of life. Repeat this process until no one pays life. Each player puts a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token into play for each one life he or she paid this way. Now normally our opponents won't be paying any life and they'll just be getting extra creatures, but we don't mind giving our opponents creatures because we're going to be goading them or pseudo goading them with Carter. Because again, that his trigger affects not only our attacking creatures, but also their attacking creatures as well. And then lastly, we've got Bitter Blossom for one and a black. We have a tribal enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and create a one one black fairy rogue creature token with flying. So now that we've gone through the ways of creating creatures, let's go through the ways that we're going to be able to get advantage off of them dying. Now these are very common in many Aristocrats decks, so you're gonna see some cards that you know. Blood Artist is one in a black for a zero one vampire. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Zulaport Cutthroat is one in a black for a one one, and whenever he or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Judith the Scourge Diva is one black red 
For a 2-2 legendary creature human shaman, other creatures you control get plus one plus zero, and whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. Now we don't have a lot of non-token creatures in this deck, but we can get some advantage off of the plus one plus zero. Falcon Wrath Noble is three and a black for a 2-2. Vampire Noble with flying, whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Pitiless Plunder is three and a black for a 1-4 pirate. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless artifact token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Because Pitiless Plunder, it says any creature, not just a non-token creature, we can abuse the heck out of this card by creating a ton of tokens, swinging in with them, sacrificing them for those multiple death triggers, and then getting a ton of treasures off of them as well. Vindictive Vampire is three and a black for a two, three creature vampire. Whenever another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Liliana Dreadhorde General is four black black for a six loyalty legendary Liliana who has a static ability. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. She can also make tokens. She can also make people sacrifice creatures and she has a nuts ultimate, which each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. But mostly we're gonna be creating tokens and drawing cards. Bastion of Remembrance is two and a black for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create a one one white human creature token. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Dark Prophecy is black, black, black for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card and you lose one life. You definitely wanna be careful with this one because it's not a May. So you definitely don't wanna, you know, have 40 tokens out and sacrifice them all and then draw into your own death. Although that seems very fun to do, and I guarantee I will do that in the future. Then lastly, we have Grave Pact, which is one black, black, black for an enchantment. Whenever any creature you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. So we've got some card draw on there. We've got some board control, but the most important aristocrats trigger is the blood artist triggers. The ones that cause our opponents to lose life because that's gonna be how we win the game. So the goal is to get those death trigger creatures out, the blood artist, the falcon wrath noble, the addictive vampire, the bastion of remembrance, get a lot of tokens out and then sacrifice them during combat to double up those triggers. So now let's talk about our sacrifice outlets. How we're gonna be able to sacrifice those creatures in the middle of combat at instant speed. First off, we have Skirk Prospector, which is one red for a 1-1, one, one, and you can sack a goblin to add one red to your mana pool. So this is only applies to our goblins. Woe Strider is two and a black for a 3-2 horror. When it enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token. Sacrifice another creature, scry one. And you can also escape it for three black black. The Seracir is one black for a 1-1 one, one vampire wizard. to so sacrifice a creature and scry one. Altar of Dementia is two generic for an artifact. Sacrifice a creature, target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. Ashnot's Altar is a three mana artifact where you can sacrifice a creature and add two generic to your mana pool. Goblin Bombardment for one and a red, an enchantment. Sacrifice a creature, Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to target creature or player. And then lastly, we have Yeheni Undying Partisan, which is two and a black for a 2-2 two -two legendary creature, Aetherborn Vampire with haste. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Yeheni, Undying Partisan. We can also sacrifice another creature and give it indestructible until end of turn. So now we're now we are set up with our aristocrats. We've got our token makers, we've got our death triggers, and we've got our sacrifice outlets. But now let's talk about the punch. Cardor is a very interesting aristocrats commander because he cares about the aristocrats part giving the blood artist triggers during combat when our creatures or our opponent's creatures are attacking, but he also pseudo goads all of our opponent's creatures, which is really nice flavor. It's very synergistic with himself. So not only are our opponents going to attack each other and have some creatures dying in combat, getting some triggers off of it, but it also means that we can attack, get some extra triggers off of the combat, but also swing in for some damage as well. Ideally, what we want to happen is have 10 tokens, or let's say we have 10 goblin tokens. Our opponents have three blockers, we've played Cardor, we swing in with the 10 creatures. They block three of them, seven goes through, but before damage, we sacrifice the three that are being blocked with triggering Cardor to drain our opponents for three, and then we can also hit in for seven and then sacrifice the seven after they've dealt damage while they're still attacking and get seven more triggers off of Cardor. Essentially, we've just done seven more damage than just having our tokens sit there and not do anything. And boy, does this excite me because I love attacking. Don't we just miss the days where we just attacked each other? When all these combos and, and tutors and 
stacks pieces. I'm not one to talk. I am a very avid stacks player. Moving on, let's talk about the cards that we have in our punch section, which are essentially just things that just give us more stuff out of our combat. Obviously in this deck, we've included Disrupt Decorum, which is two red red for a sorcery and it goads all creatures you don't control. Mob Rule is four red red for a sorcery. Choose one, gain control of all creatures with power four or greater until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste. Or you can gain control of all creatures with power three or less until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste. And with our sacrifice outlets, we can just sacrifice all of those creatures we're stealing anyway. So two for one. Cavalcade of Calamity is one under red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, Cavalcade of Calamity deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. This is actually the card that was first in mind when I saw Cardor, is because we can get all these tokens, get a Cavalcade of Calamity, have a Blood of Sword out, and just get so many triggers because we are attacking. Raid Bombardment is very similar. It's two in a red for an enchantment whenever a creature you control with power two or less attacks. Raid Bombardment deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. And then of course, at the end of combat, we can play a Wound Reflection, which is five and a black, four an enchantment at the beginning of each end step. Each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn, which helps double the triggers on everything we're getting, which can get so nuts so fast. And I'm so so oh, excited for this deck. You have no idea. Moving on to the next step, we have our ramp, our card draw, and our removal. We've gone through the basics of the deck, but now we need to go back to the basics of Commander, make sure that we have stuff to play, our hand is full, and we're taking out our opponent's best things. For our ramp package, with the Skirk Prospector and the Ashnod's Altar counting in that mana ramp category. We also have Battle Him, which is one in red for an instant. Add red to your mana pool for each creature you control. Arcane Signet, which is two generic for an artifact, which can tap for one of your commander's color identity. Charcoal Diamond, two generic for an artifact. It enters tapped and you can tap it for a black. We also have Fire Diamond, which does the same thing for red. Fettler Warstone is too generic for an artifact. Add one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. Rakdos Signet, which is too generic for an artifact. One and tap, you can add black and red to your mana pool. And then Mana Echoes is too red red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may add an amount of colorless equal to the number of creatures you control that share a creature type with it. Mana Echoes is a fantastic card, especially if you're creating a lot of tokens, you can do some crazy cool plays. But the most important thing is that we can fill our hand. So let's talk about our card draw. In our creature section, we have God Eternal Bond 2, which is three black, black for a five, six legendary creature zombie god with menace. When he enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of other permanents, then draw that many cards. And he also has the god text, which when he dies or is exiled, you can put it on its owner's library third from the top. So we can't play this during combat unless we can play at flash speed, but we can get a lot of cards and also a lot of death triggers off of our creatures dying. Obviously Liliana Dread Horde General also gives us a lot of card draw. Knight's Whisper is one in a black for a sorcery. You draw two cards and you lose two life. Sign in Blood is black black for a sorcery. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Read the Bones is two in a black for a sorcery. Scry two, then draw two cards, you lose two life. Decree of Pain is six black black for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures, they can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. You can also cycle it for three black black and each creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn if you cycle it. Dark Prophecy again, black, black, black for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card and lose a life. Necropotence is black, black, black for an enchantment. Whenever, skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Pay one life, exile the top card of your library face down and put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. Then we have Phyrexian Arena, which is one black, black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw cards and you lose one life. Rounding us out, we have our removal, which is very important because in case we're playing against a deck that is not as fast as us, because this deck is pretty fast, we need to make sure that we're removing our opponent's best creatures. Moving on to our removal spells, because of course every good commander deck needs removal spells. We have Tragic Slip, which is one black for an instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, but it has morbid. So if a creature died this turn, that creature gets minus 13, minus 13 instead. Dread Boar is black red for a sorcery, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Go for the Throat is one and a black for an instant, destroy target non-artifact creature. Terminate is black red for an instant, destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. Chaos Warp is two and a red for an instant, the owner of target permanent shuffles it into 
into their library and reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. Hero's Downfall is one black black for an instant destroy target creature or planeswalker. And then last but not least, we have Feed the Swarm, which is one in a black for a sorcery, destroy target creature, or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanence converted mana cost. All right, goats, that is it for our car door deck tech. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys decide to build this because this is a very fun and new twist to an aristocrat's deck. An uncommon commander with an effect that we've never seen before. It's very, very exciting and I really hope you guys enjoyed this brew. If you have any suggestions or cards that you would put in here, feel free to comment them in the section below. Tell us what you liked about this deck and other Kale Time commanders that you were super excited for building. Make sure to stay tuned because we have lots of deck techs coming out for Kale Time. So look forward to your favorite spoilers and we will get on those right away. Thank you so much to everybody who watches and listens. If you are not already subscribed, then please subscribe to our channel and consider sharing this with a friend. Maybe somebody who loves Rakdos or Aristocrats. I'm sure they would love to see these builds. And with that, I bid you all adieu and have a great spoiler season.